It's May, so because of that, it's heavy recruiting season for the Florida Gators, so we're going to get you caught up with Swamp 24-7's Blake Alderman. We've got some updates on some critical recruitments for the Florida Gators and a prediction we're going to ask Blake later about, so stay tuned. We're going to jump into it. All right, let's start with one-time FSU commit Jordan Pride. It seemed like the, his recruitment was kind of twenty trending away from FSU for a while, and then he decommitted, and he was in the swamp literally the next day. And a lot of people thought he might pull the trigger right then. What are your thoughts here? Is that something you think we could possibly see happening soon, or is it going to be later down the line? You know, I, I don't think you can – completely dismiss the idea uh, because he left the spring game saying that, you know, April, May decision could be possible for him. We'll see. I think the the thought process is, you know, sure, could he be ready to make this decision? He's obviously – he's actually going to Texas A&M on Friday. He's going to spend, mm-hmm. the I guess, the entire weekend there at, in College Station. I think that right now Florida is probably the team to watch right now, and I say that because Florida was really trending even before he backed off that FSU commitment. I do think that there are some connections through Pride and Jimbo Fisher's son to some extent. Um, so I, that that's obviously an end that the Aggies have, and we'll see how the visit goes there if that changes anything. But I think that those two schools are the main ones there. He he's at this point he's he's looking at possibly or he's mentioned at least a late May commitment. I think the idea of official visits since you're just a month away, I think that's something that's going to be hard for some of these kids to turn down. I mean, you've got a weekend trip that's paid for. You get wined and dined. I mean, it's it's kind of a easy sell. I mean, even if he wanted me to take those official visits for him, like I have no problem doing those for him either. But um, I, I think that right now Florida is probably the team to watch. I think they're the leader in the clubhouse. I think A&M is probably giving them the most – uh, run for their money, if you will. We'll see how that visit goes this coming weekend. We'll see how long he wants to take things out, if official visits are going to be a thing. But I have a 24-7 sports crystal ball in for Florida. I feel good about that. There was a lot of buzz in mm-hmm. Florida's corner even before he made that uh, that official decommitment. Like you said, he turns around and he shows up at the spring game the day after that decision. I was a little surprised that he left uncommitted. It just seemed like yeah. things were pointing that way. Um, but, you know, I, I think things are still in a good spot for Florida. But, you know, I'm watching A&M. I mean, I'm not turning down being wine and dine either, so I get it. <laughs> uh, you were recently down in my neck of the woods. You were visiting Tampa Catholic, which is actually where I graduated high school. And there's two interesting prospects down there and TJ Moore and Eddie Pierre-Louis. It kind of sounded like some communication with Eddie may have slowed, but the staff did see both this week. Can you talk to us about both of those recruitments? Sure. You know, there's actually three players from Tampa Catholic that are, are at least have Florida offers and have visited. You know, TJ Moore is the one everyone's talking about. He's the top 247 wide receiver. Florida's got the lead right now for him. Clemson, I think it's very close. You know, I think Clemson is right behind them. He actually told me during my time there speaking with him that Florida and Clemson are the only official visits he's got set on the schedule right now. He'll be at uh, Clemson June 2nd that weekend. Um, That's actually the Tigers. They're they're going a little bold here. They're actually having one official visit weekend. At least I, I believe I read that in the in the month of June. So they're having that first weekend there to have official visitors. That's good for Florida. If you're really having a close battle like that, and you've got the, the I guess the last say above those other that other contender there. You know him turning around there and having that official visit the next weekend. Tennessee, USC, um, uh, Georgia were some others that he mentioned as other possible official visits for for the summer. But those are the only two set right now. You know I really like where Florida's at there. And it's funny, he actually said um, that he really hadn't given Florida much thought before that visit that he took unofficially earlier this spring, that, you know, his mom is a big Florida fan, that she obviously wanted to go check it out. She wanted him to, you know, maximize every part of his recruiting process and leave no stones unturned. So they took an unofficial visit back in April to Florida, and he said it just completely blew his mind. You know, the time around Billy Gonzalez, Florida's wide receivers coach, and just the long list of guys he's coached, you know, the two speak every day. Um, Billy Napier is involved with him to show how much of a priority he is. And Billy's actually coached, uh, you know, wide receivers at Alabama himself. So having a head coach that is is familiar with developing wide receivers, offensive minded type of head coach, you know, I think all those things are positives there for Florida. So those are the two official visits for him there right now. You know, I like where Florida sits there again. He, he, just was very adamant in saying how close it was between those two schools. So, you know, I think they're, you know, June can obviously maybe decipher some things even more of where his recruitment's at. Um, But, you know, heading into those official visits, Florida's got the edge. All right. And what about Eddie Pierre-Louis? Yeah. You know, like you mentioned that he, he had stated when I spoke with him that, you know, Florida, 
the conversations and the contact level, I guess, rather, just really wasn't quite as strong as it has been lately. He even mentioned that the contact level with Florida has picked up here lately. You know, that he's been talking with Rob Sale, Florida's offensive coordinator, offensive line coach, a lot more. The two are getting to know each other. Um, he was there last for uh, Florida's Pro Day. His older brother is Richard Garage, the Florida right. offensive lineman who is now in the NFL. He uh, signed with the Buffalo Bills. So there's familiarity there. And I think that one thing that he really wants to see is, you know, maybe on last visits, you know, yes, he took visits. Yes, he spent time around coaches. But it, it also, always kind of felt like it was, you know, this is Richard's little brother. You know, it was never really his own visit. You know, those get, games, yeah. game visits were there to watch brother and obviously spend time with coaches and get time around Florida. Going to pro day there was to support his brother. He wants to take a visit on his own to where he gets that time around the entire coaching staff, continue to build those bonds. You know, when I asked about official visits – he said Florida will, will most certainly get one, you know, but the list is pretty long of official visits he wants to take, and he's not rushing his decision process. He's not trying to have anything done, at least until midpoint of the season, if not closer to the early signing period. And if he continues to wait things out, you know, past July, official visit numbers, those go out the window. You don't have to just take five anymore. You can take as many as you want. He made the joke of saying that, you know, that he could take – you know, I was like, well, how many do you think you're going to take? You think you're going to take like 25 or something like that? And he kind of laughed and he said, that's too many. But, you know, I, I do want to try to take as many as I can as a reasonable type of number. So, you know, he's going to have those expanded official visits. I think he takes full advantage of that. I expect Florida to get one. And, yes, you know, Florida has really turned up the heat for him. And, you know, the third guy at Tampa Catholic is is a, a four-star athlete type, Jameer Grimsley. He plays wide receiver for, for Tampa Catholic. He plays defensive back for Tampa Catholic. I think he's he's more into playing defensive back at the next level, and he's a guy that got offered by Florida earlier this year. Um, he's been landing offers le- left and right since January, and Florida got them on campus, <clears throat> really kind of turned the heat up on him, was really impressed by Corey Raymond and his track record he has there. So Florida is really you know recruiting three guys at Tampa Catholic to show how big of a priority that school for them is in 24. All right, well, Tampa Catholic, I'm putting you on notice. You better be <laughs> Jesuit this year if you have three guys with Gator offers there. Uh, that Florida or, uh, Tampa Catholic and Jesuit is kind of a little like Florida, Florida State, which we've talked a ton about Florida, Florida State battles. And here's one that a lot of people have asked about, Jamari Howard. He is a Michigan State, commi- um, a Michigan State commit. Where do you think that he is leaning right now? You know, if you – If I had to make a decision right now of where he was leaning between the two, I would give the slight edge to Florida State. You know, I think that they've done a really good job with him. And that's not to say that Florida is completely out of it. I do think that he's giving a serious look to both of those schools. You know, you you really don't ever want to be a Dade County guy's first commitment. You know, you really don't. You know, Michigan State got him. He got him in there on the boat. Um, That's a lot of miles there. Um, it's very cold there in East Lansing too. So I don't know if he's experienced the coldness there uh, being a Florida guy, a South Florida guy, even that. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I think Florida and Florida State are, are definitely in the best spot of flipping him. I'd give the edge to the Seminoles. You know, he mentioned them as a school that he grew up watching. You know, it, it's kind of been the dream school for him. Um, but I, I think that what keeps Florida in there is Corey Raymond. You know, the, the relationship the two of them have. Um, just the track record he has, you know, they're obviously pitching early playing time as Florida tries to remake these defense they have. Um, Corey Raymond will actually be by his school on Friday when he makes his stops there on the recruiting trail. So, you know, official visits, I, I expect him to take school uh, official visits to other schools. I think Florida State, I think Florida will get some of those official visits. I, I wouldn't be shocked if Michigan State gets one, obviously, with him being committed there. I don't know if he's going to take those in the summer or in the fall. I think that's something he's still trying to decide between. But, you know, like I said, you know, being a Dade County guy, having that first decision there and being the first commitment, you know, I, I think that that's going to be a, a hard pull for them as this recruitment drags on. So I'm keeping an eye on those two in-state schools for sure. I mean, Gainesville and Tallahassee are cold enough if you're coming from <laughs> uh, from down south. So I, I cannot imagine going to Michigan State. All right. UF doesn't have any offensive linemen committed yet, and it's early. But who are they trending well with in the trenches on the offensive side of the ball? Well, we mentioned Eddie Pierre-Louis, you know, him taking an official visit there and hearing more from the coaching staff there certainly means that, you know, they're in contention for him. Yeah. Um, you know, I think other guys, you know, Ty Hilton, he's a three-star offensive tackle there from Avito High School. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I think that the big three in the state of Florida have done a really good job with him so far. You know, I expect him to take official visits to those schools. Um, you know, with it being a bit of a down year in the state of Florida, guys like Eddie Pierre-Louis, guys like Ty Hilton, those guys become a little bit more of a hot commodity than they would maybe in regular years where there's a little bit more offensive linemen there. So, you know, I think that that's a guy Florida's done a really good job with. Michael Uweenie is a guy there in the state of Texas that Florida is going to get on campus for an official visit. They haven't been able to get him on campus yet for an unofficial visit. And, you know, they're, they're a school that's, that's what was on his interest enough. He's heard from Rob Sale, Darnell Stapleton enough for them to get him on campus for an official visit. Nair Daniels is another guy that Florida's gotten on campus before. He's a big six foot six, 340 pound offensive lineman. Um, they're out of the uh, New Jersey area. Ethan Calloway is a four star offensive tackle there from the state of North Carolina. He's got an official visit set to Florida for the early part of June. Fletcher Westfall, a guy out of uh, Virginia, is a guy that hears from Rob Sale, Darnell Stapleton a lot. He's got an official visit set for J- uh, June 16th. Um, you know, Marquez Easley is a guy right there, four star offensive tackle out of Illinois that Florida was able to get on campus for an unofficial visit this spring. They're battling for an official visit. You know, whenever you've got a guy that's six foot seven, three hundred pounds, and yeah. the way Florida likes those guys that look like the Monstars from Space Jam, they like those yes. offensive linemen that are put together like that. So, you know, him having that frame is something that they really like. Uh, Marcus Maskell is another guy there out of the state of Georgia that they're going to have on an official visit there in June. So, if you're picking up what I'm putting down here, Florida's got a, a very deep board of offensive yeah. linemen. A lot of these guys are going to be making official visits there in the month of June. So I think the offensive line board becomes more clear as those official visits start to take place. Um, so, you know, sure, would, would you love to have offensive linemen there in your class now, especially with how they like to run the ball, how heavily they are in the trenches with two offensive line coaches? Um, you know, sure, they would, they'd love to have that. But I think things become a lot more clear on – Maybe not who's in the class if some of these guys want to wait out and take their official visits, but at least who you have a really good shot with after you get these right. guys on campus. Well, good. Gator fans can breathe a sigh of relief. There will be offensive linemen in this class. All right, we teased this earlier. Uh, you've got to step out on a limb here for me, and only the people that watch this video to the very end are going to get this piece of information. <laughs> Who is UF's next commit, if you had to guess today? If I had to guess today, I, I think I would go with maybe Jordan Pride just because he has that May decision time, or at least has tossed out that May decision timeline and mm-hmm. where Florida's sitting at with him. Um, you know, I, there, there's plenty of other guys there that are trending for. I'm actually looking through the list right now of guys that just anyone that jumps out to me. You know, Mario Craver is a guy that if Florida wanted to take him, I think he would be in the class already by now. You know, they're kind of waiting to see how things flush out there with their, with their wide receiver board. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so I, I think that Jordan Pride is probably one of the guys that would jump out to be probably the most for me. You know, Florida, yeah. there's a guy that, you know, they're in a pretty good spot with that. You know, I, I think Florida could hear some news by the end of this week there. You know, we'll see how things play out there. So, you know, that's someone that we'll have to wait and see how the week, you know, fares out there. That's not a name that I've dropped yet, but, you know, we'll see how things go there. But I, I think Florida could have some very good news on the recruiting front by the end of the week. All right. Well, we love to hear it. Thanks so much to Blake Alderman from Swamp 24-7 for joining. We also spoke with Blake about UF potentially changing a massive recruiting strategy. That video will come out soon, so make sure that you're subscribed so you don't miss it. If you've missed our video on some huge transfer targets for UF, you can watch it by clicking right here.